Hey guys, Jill from Whole for Life. Uh, I made a quick video earlier today. I'm going to make a little longer one now. Just uh, wanted to first and foremost, I want to thank you all for the donations that you have made. Um, I do want to remind you again that clothing donations are on pause right now. We are not taking any of those right now because the areas um, that are designated for those are inundated and they've got to wait until the people can get there, get some of those. Um, and then I'm sure we'll open that back up. I'm sure that will be a need again, but right now we do not need any more clothing. So I want to thank you so much. I mean, our little office, you guys showed up. We had a truck and the back of a full-size truck full of clothes yesterday. Um, we have I think two beds of two pickup trucks today full of clothes and we will be taking those but we don't want to take any more right now we want to be very respectful and very mindful to take what they need when they need it and as I said in the beginning that can change even hour to hour much less day to day these locals are doing a fantastic job of assessing the needs of getting those taken care of and um, taking care of, most importantly, taking care of the people. So um, we thank them for that. But that means that, you know, as every day something changes. And so as it changes, we shall too. Um, so we do appreciate those donations, though. We do plan to go back Friday. We will be taking multiple generators. It looks like maybe four right now. We will also be taking... Um, the clothes that we mentioned, uh, someone donated three new mattresses. We'll be taking those. Um, we don't need more mattresses right now, but there are those are already um, going to certain locations. So uh, the generators, I'm sure, will be spoken for as well if they're not already. But um, from this point forward, I really am going to shift more to what I was kind of trying to do all along. We want to do monetary donations so that we can either continue to help them fund refilling the gas cans for, or the fuel for these generators. Um, that's a very big expense, and David and Shelly are doing most of that, out, if not all of it, out of their own pocket. And so that, you know, think about how many generators just our little business has taken up there. Um, that's a lot of money. So we want to funnel some money for that. We also want funds for cleanup crews. We have been able to give a, a pretty sizable amount already for that. We want to continue to be able to do that so that people can continue the cleanup. That's really the focus right now. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on that and just thank you so much. The other thing I wanted to talk about for just a minute is more uh, to do with the holistic approach, you know, body, mind, soul, spirit, um, you know, whatever, however you want to say that. But we as a whole, in order for us to be healthy, you know, everything kind of has to be clicking along and working right. The thing that I am consistently seeing, hearing, and picking up on from people, um, and I was in the office all day today and I heard it um, more than once, is just the fact that our worlds have all kind of gotten rocked by this. You know, you just don't think about the mountaintops being obliterated by a hurricane. That's not something we think about. Um, we don't think about a hurricane coming through and doing the destructive damage that it did to our state. Um, it's just not something that we've ever really thought of. So it's sort of like the rug kind of got swept out from under our feet, so to speak. Um, and I'm sensing and, and even hearing a lot of people are articulating fear, uncertainty, anxiety, um, uh, just a sense of uh, unrest. And we already were dealing with some of those issues just from where our the state of the world in general there's so much dissension there's so much animosity there's so much just i mean we can't seem to agree to disagree anymore there's just a lot of contentious things going on in the world and so now you've compounded that with our brother and sister states just being somewhat wiped off the map in some areas it's also very easy for us to see the devastation if you watch social media. I mean, I'm on social media and have been basically, we had hardly any internet while we were going through the storm stuff. And then when I got back on, it was to do these donation relief efforts. And so I'm on to make these posts. I'm on to post these posts uh, and do a little bit of business content and not much of that. And even I have seen enough to really get me downhearted and sad if I let it. Uh, so I can only imagine if you're scrolling much on social media, I can only imagine um, how much that could affect anyone who has a heart for people. Um, it just would have to affect you 
pretty badly. And then, of course, that sometimes can lead to some anxiety and some fear and things like that. We know that those aren't um, things of God. That's not what he would have us be, is fearful or anxious. Um, but I think there's a sense of concern for lack you know what will i be will i have enough will i be provided for and that already was occurring um somewhat just because of the economy and the state like i said that our world is in we already were hearing that from a lot of people so now compounded with this uh it seems like there's a lot of uncertainty in the world there's a lot of fear and anxiety creeping in for people and i wanted to just take a minute to kind of tell you my perspective on that um I, of course, I believe that God will take care of us. I absolutely do believe that. Um, I know how inconvenienced I was, and I'm sure I didn't handle it the best way that I could uh, when we didn't have power or water or internet or anything, and that was a few days. Um, so I can't even begin to imagine what these people in these other states are dealing with or feeling, and I've been there. We've actually been to see that, So, and I still can't grasp it, what they must be dealing with. So I'm not speaking to that. I'm speaking to the rest of us, the rest of us who are able to donate or we're able to sit comfortably in our home and not have to worry about where um, our shelter is going to come from. Literally, our shelter is going to come from. Those of us that are feeling the anxiety and the fear and that kind of stuff, um, I would just say be encouraged because look at what God is doing for these people. This is tragic what's happened to them. But even in the midst of tragedy, he is bringing private citizens. He's bringing, look at all of you. If I could, if I could explain to you the diverse group of people that have donated just to our little fund, um, He's bringing people together from all over the world, from all over, all different walks, all different belief systems. I mean, we're seeing um, people come together for the greater good, which is so refreshing. And I thank him for letting me be a part of that and allowing me to see that. But it also reminds me that part of the reason I don't think I'm feeling any of that fear or any of that anxiety, and I thank God for it, is because I have chosen to... I hate the word channel because we've really perverted that um, now, but I've just chosen to focus on other people. I have chosen to put my focus first and foremost on God, uh, which I always strive to do, and secondly on other people. How My prayer was, how can I help, Lord? Show me. And um, I don't pretend to have a huge sphere of influence, but we do have some influence. And it's obvious because you guys are paying attention to these terribly made and produced videos. Um, you are sharing them and you are getting the word out. And so there is some influence there. And that's all I want is for the Lord to use our influence however is best for his glory and just in service of others. But I think that's why I'm not experiencing a lot of the feelings and emotions that other people are. One, I'm not saturating my mind with it over and over again, just the devastating side of it. Uh, but two, and I'm not ruminating on that. I'm making the choice not to because I'm a ruminator, so I have to make that choice. But um, all my fellow ruminators out there will understand that. But also, I'm choosing to focus on other people, other needs. And that's where my focus and energy is going. How can I help someone else? And when we get out of our own way and start doing that, we find that we don't have nearly the struggles in our within ourselves that we once had um so i would just like to encourage you that's not i'm not trying to tell you what to do i'm just saying that's what's really helped me and it in pretty much any season of life that i've gone in the valley or the pit so to speak um that's always what seemingly has pulled me out is when i get my shift and shift my focus get my focus off me and get my focus on first god of course and second you know, helping somebody else. What can I do to um, get into, and I'm not saying you have to go do what we're doing, um, but, you know, even at our office, we consider it a ministry because we get to pour into people every day. The Lord allows us the opportunity and privilege to pour into people every day. Yep, that can be a lot sometimes, and you have to know how to properly take care of yourself in the midst of that, and I haven't always done a great job of that, hence he's backed me up a little, uh, and I'm not working quite as much, but the flip side of that is 
there's always opportunities everywhere. I don't care where you are. Um, and so let's just try to shift and continue to put our focus on the Lord and put our focus on other people and our fellow man. And I think some of these emotions will just naturally die down. I love you guys and I thank you so much.